Good morning, my dear students. I welcome to the National University online class. During this pandemic, I feel proud to be the part of this National University online class lecture as a resource person. Please maintain the health rules. Our subject is English. This program is for B honors first year students. Course code 211101. Name of course, English Reading Skills. Today's third lecture and title is Grammar Practice, mainly Transformation. And I am Khandogar Mushi Rahman, assistant professor here with you today. I hope you all are fine today and I also hope that you attended my last two classes, uh, I mean first and second lectures. And in those lectures, I tried to introduce you English reading skills and also comprehension passage with some grammatical items. So look at today's topic. As usual, recapping, checking the previous home task, grammar practice and transformation and the class will be ended with giving home task. So can you recall the previous class? I mean the second class. Second lecture, we worked on the life of Helen Keller uh, comprehension passage. And we also worked on transformation. I mean, simple complex compound, active, passive, some practice we did. Can you remember? And synonyms even on the passage. That means I tried to introduce you in this, uh, the first part of our syllabus, I mean, question paper, part A, what type of questions would be there. So did you do the homework? At the end of the last class, I gave you writing work. I mean, I asked a question to write about autism. What is autism? And another question was given to you. Do you have any autistic child in your family? If yes, how do you treat him or her? Or if not, then how do you, how should you, treat an autistic child of your society? Those are the questions in the last class. I think some of you have done the homework, of course. If you have done that well, that's well, because if you follow my lectures, you should do some works that will actually develop your reading skills. Otherwise, if you don't do the homework, you will not actually be able to develop reading skills as I expect. So let us start today's lecture, grammar practice, some basic items I'm going to discuss today in the very beginning. Though these terms are very familiar, but you still try to understand easily these things. What is phrase? We are going to learn difference between phrase, idiom and clause. What is phrase? Phrase is a group of words where the words retain their literal or dictionary meaning. Literal meaning, dictionary meaning, that means original meaning. For example, keep the book on the table, look at the sentence. Keep the book on the table. So here, the book, two words, it's a group. On the table, it's a three words, it's also a group. and the meaning of the words remain unchanged, no change. The book means the book on the table means on the table, nothing else. So these are the two phrases here. Phrase means a group of words where the words retain their literal or dictionary meaning. Look at the definition of idiom. Idiom is also a group of words where the words give different meaning instead of their literal meaning. For example, it is raining cats and dogs, you know, cats and dogs. The, the meaning is cats, animal, dogs is animal. But here in this sentence, cats and dogs together give different meaning. I mean, a torrential rain, heavy rain. It is raining heavily. Cats and dogs means here heavily, a torrential rain. So it is an idiom. This is not a phrase, actually. It's a group of words, of course. But this phrase is called idiom because it gives different meaning rather than their literal meaning. Cats means here not cats. Dogs means not dogs. Oh. I think it's clear to you, is it? Now look at clause. 
you know the definition of clause clause is also a group of words that must have a finite verb and its subject that is the difference clause must have a finite verb for idiom and a phrase it's not mandatory or obligatory that there must be a finite verb that is not the uh, it is not compulsory for phrase and idiom but for clause it's also a group of words but that must have a finite verb and its subject for example he works hard so that he can succeed in life you see here are how many verbs he works hard works is one verb he can succeed in life succeed in another verb so two verbs are here that means two clauses are here each verb is equal to one clause he works hard it's a complete sense that's why it is main clause so that he can succeed in life in complete sense that's why it is subordinate clause so can you tell me what type of sentence it is in the previous class we talked about simple complex compound so this is complex sentence today we are going to discuss in details how to identify these sentences actually and doing some transformations and so i think it's now clear about your idea about phrase idiom and clause group of words where the words retain their literal meaning idiom group of words where the words give different meaning instead of their literal meaning clause is a group of words that must have a finite verb and its subject verb and subject verb succeed and subject he so that's all now let us see according to structure four types of english sentences are there you know already these things because after plus 12 you have done these things this is i told you revision work but still you have forgot some of the things that's why you need to prepare yourself because now you are the student of english department you should know every details of these grammatical items uh, to be uh, to have a good comment on the language in english language so i'm trying to give you some clues or ideas so that you can do well in english reading skills look at these four types of sentence in most of the books they are written in three types in but some grammar books told four types simple sentence only one main clause so when we identify a sentence you have to look at the verb and i mean clause if there is one verb one clause so simple sentence only one main clause you see example we learning this to get a good job so don't confuse you see here to get is not a verb here to get is infinitive to plus base form of a verb it is infinitive that's why this is simple sentence there is only one main verb main verb we learn english to get a good job complex sentence is one main clause and at least one subordinate clause so if in any sentence we find one main clause and one subordinate clause then it is complex sentence for example we learn english so that we can get a good job so to count or to find out clauses you have to look for the verb you see learn is one verb and get is another verb and this verb is the main clause because it is complete sense we learn english so that we can get a good job this is in complete sense so this is subordinate clause that's why this sentence is complex sentence compound sentence two or more main clauses or coordinating clauses added with conjunctions like and but or either or neither or not only but also like that so for example we learn english and we get good jobs so we get good jobs is one main clause we learn english is another main clause added with conjunction coordinating words when the main clauses are added with coordinating words conjunction these main clauses are called coordinating clauses also so this is a coordinating clause is nothing else main clause when added with coordinating words then the main clauses are called coordinating clauses now compound complex if we find in any sentence two or more main clauses added with conjunctions and at least one subordinate clause then it is this sentence has the nature of both compound and complex because two or more main clauses added with conjunctions that is the feature of compound sentence and uh, presence of at least one subordinate clause is the feature of complex sentence so this is a mixture actually of compound and complex that's why in some grammar books it is written compound complex sentence example is here we learn english so that we can get good jobs and enjoy our life have you got it i think you can easily understand we learn english so this is one main clause another main clause we enjoy our life same subject we is not repeated here so this is one main clause we learn english another main clause we enjoy our life 
and subordinate class so that we can get good jobs. What is get here? So you see there are three clauses, two main clauses and one subordinate clause. So this type of sentence is called compound complex sentence. Now get ready with pen and paper. You have to do some works. I told you why, while you are attending the class, you must have reading materials, I mean at least writing materials, pen and paper. Look, when we transform from simple to complex or complex to simple, then one thing is important. We have to make the clause phrase and we have to turn the phrase into clause. And the boy who are running in the field, here are some examples. How can we make a clause a phrase? The boys who are running in the field, this is a clause because there is subject and there is a verb. But look at the phrase, when this clause is turning to be a phrase, what is the structure? The boys running in the field, same meaning. Here running is not the verb. This participle or sometimes gerund here now participle. Running is showing the condition of the boys. So you see how to turn the clauses into phrases. Here are some examples. You have to do more practice, I mean, of this uh, clause and phrase. Uh, classification of clauses there, subordinate clause is classified as adjective clause, adverbial clause, preposition, I mean, noun clause. And on the other hand, phrase is also divided in several types like noun phrase, adjective phrase, adverbial phrase, prepositional phrase, participial phrase. So those things you have to learn from any good grammar book that is available at your hand. Now look at these examples. The picture which was painted by your brother. Phrases, the picture painted by your brother. So the structure is that. When he was in England, this is a clause. If we make it phrase, it may be when in England. While I was working in the field, here is subject verb, there's a clause. But look at this one, it's a phrase, while working in the field. The work which is to be done by us, the work to be done by us, is a phrase. The man who has been injured, is a clause. Phrases, the injured man. The girl who arrived first, the girl to arrive first, is a phrase. Lessons which are learned easily is a clause. Phrases, lessons learned easily. Have you seen? So you have to work on this type of clauses more and more to improve your, I mean, grammatical skills. Now try to change these sentences as directed. While I was walking along the street, I saw a dead cow. So to make it simple, what do you have to do? We have to, the main clause will be unchanged. We have to make the subordinate clause a phrase while I was walking along the street. Just now we have seen how to make this clause a phrase. While I was walking along the street, it should be what? Try to write your answer quickly. If you follow my advice, you will win your object. So you will win your object. This is main clause. You have to change the subordinate clause to a phrase, if you follow my advice. Write down the answer. Quickly, I'll provide you the answer. Just make it phrase. Then it will be simple. Having learned his lessons, he went out to play. Make it compound. Compound means two main clauses. So one main clause is here, he went out to play. You have to turn this phrase into a main clause. Having learned his lessons is a phrase. You have to make it a clause, main clause. A gypsy wandering across the fields found the baby. You have to make it complex. So you see, there is only one verb. So one clause, one clause is here. You have to make another clause from this phrase, wandering across the fields. You have to make a subordinate clause to make it complex. Try to do it quickly. In spite of being wealthy and educated, he never made a name. You have to make it complex. He never made a name, that is, he never tried to show his name and fame. This is main clause. In spite of being oily and educated, this is a phrase. From this phrase, you have to make it a clause, I mean subordinate clause. Have you done? Now check your answer. 
met your answers with the following. While I was walking along the street, I saw a dead cow. You see, while, wa while walking, walking along the street, or while walking along the street, you can write like this. Walking along the street, I saw a dead cow. I can write while walking along the street, I saw a dead cow. If you follow my advice, so the phrase is following my advice. Now this is simple, you see. If you follow my advice, follow following my advice. So this phrase, simple. You will win your object. Number three, having learned his lessons. This is a phrase, we have to make it close. After he had learned his lessons, he went out to play. Because he went out to play this past simple tense, we have to make the clause past perfect tense. After he had learned his lessons, he went out to play. Clear? Number four, a gypsy wandering across the fields. This is the phrase. To make it complex, we have to make it a clause, subordinate clause. A gypsy who was wandering across the fields found the baby. A gypsy who was wandering across the fields, this subordinate clause, found the baby. A gypsy found the baby. You see, that is the main clause. A gypsy found the baby. That subordinate clause is who was wandering across the fields. In spite of being wealthy and educated, it was a phrase. We have to make it a clause to make it complex. Subordinate clause. Although he was wealthy and educated, he never made a name. So I have given here some examples, only a few examples here. As you have done these things up to intermediate level, now you have to revise these things and you have to see more examples from any good grammar books and practice at home. And another transformational item we have in our exam paper that is change of degrees sometimes. So there are three degrees of comparison comparison of adjectives. You are also familiar with this item, also, I think. So that's I'm giving you some basic ideas again, and I'll give you to do some work. I mean, changing the degrees. So there are three degrees, positive, comparative, and superlative. Positive degree means no comparison at all. For example, he is a tall boy. Tall is positive degree. There is no change, no comparison. Comparative degree, comparison between two things or persons. That means when you compare between two things or persons, then it is comparative degree. Like he is taller than his brother. So tall is positive, taller is comparative. He's taller than his brother. Superlative degree, comparison among more than two things or persons. So superlative degree, when we compare among more than two things or persons. Example is, he is the tallest boy in the class. The tallest and superlative degree, you know, it takes article D before it. He is the tallest boy in the class. So the same idea can be expressed using positive, comparative, and superlative adjectives. For example, all of the three sentences given below mean the same. Look at these examples. Bushra is the smartest girl in the class. There is a superlative degree because Bushra is compared with all the girls in the class. And if you make it positive, the idea is same. The meaning is same. We can make it positive. No other girl in the class is as smart as Bushra. The meaning is same. Bushra is the smartest no other girl in the class is as smart as Bushra so in positive degree we use as as you know Bushra is smarter than any other girl in the class that is competitive smarter so it's smart smarter smartest so these are the degrees you have learned happy happier happiest so from grammar books you will learn some more I mean adjectives and you have to memorize some of the adjectives with degrees, positive, competitive, and superlative. So can you uh, do this? Try, rewrite the sentences given below using different degrees. I am not giving so many rules here because you have done these things before. Now just checking how much you can recall or how much you have forgot by this time. So do it quickly. Try to make it. Shakespeare is the most famous of all writers in English. So this superlative degree, the most famous. You have to make it competitive and positive if you can. Do it quickly. Iron is more useful than any other metal. Here, more useful means competitive degree. Try to make it 
superlative or positive anyone at least. I earn as much money as Ram or Ram, what do you say? I earn as much money as Ram, Ram. So this is as much as positive degree, try to make it competitive. China is larger than India, it's competitive, try to make it positive. Greenland is the largest island in the world, superlative, try to make it competitive and positive. Air is lighter than water. This is lighter, competitive degree. Try to make it positive. I'm taller than my brother. So this is competitive, try to make it positive. Sham is the strongest boy in the class. This is superlative, try to make it positive and competitive. Now, this is a very easy and familiar topic, so I'm not giving you much time. Let's check the answer. Match your answers with the following. Shakespeare is the most famous of all writers in English. It was the superlative degree and look at the competitive. No other writer in English is, this positive, no other writer in English is as famous as Shakespeare. So from superlative to competitive, we use no other. Sorry, positive, competitive, superlative to positive. We use no other. Shakespeare is more famous than any other writer in English. This is more famous, competitive. Iron is more useful than any other metal. The answer is no other metal is as useful as iron. This is positive. Iron is the most useful of all metals. This is superlative. Check your one. How many of you have done correct? I earn as much money as uh, Rumon. It was Ram. By mistake, it is written Rumon. It should be Ram. I got there. It was. So you see. Ram does not earn more money than I do. This is competitive degree. China is larger than India. India is not as large as China. Number five, Greenland is the largest island in the world, superlative, to make it competitive. Greenland is larger than any other island in the world. No other island in the world is as large as Greenland. This is positive. Air is lighter than water. Water is not as light as air. So this is positive degree again. I am taller than my brother. My brother is not as tall as I am. So this is positive. It's, I think this is very easy for you. Sham is the strongest boy in the class. This is superlative again. We have to make it I mean, competitive and positive. Sham is stronger than any other boy in the class. No other boy in the class is as strong as Sham. So how many of you have corrected out of eight? Check yourself. If you have done all the correct, if you have done all the answers correct, so welcome, congratulations. But remember that you have to do a lot of practice with many other exercises. Another item I'm going to introduce you also in transformation, we have voice change also sometimes on the basis of the comprehension passes, some sentences are picked up and given to you for changing the voice. So that is seems to be very easy topic, but there are so many rules of voice change and so many uh, uh, some exceptional, exceptional, exceptionals are also there. Uh, so I think you should I have a review on voice change also. Uh, basic ideas of voice. What is voice? So this question is not important. For example, as a student of English department, I mean English language, you must know each and every item, I mean in details fully. What is voice? Do you have any idea? Here is the answer. Voice also known as diathesis. Voice also known as diathesis. Sometimes it is a diathesis is a grammatical feature that describes the relationship between the verb and the subject. Subject is also known as the agent in a sentence. More specifically, voice describes how the verb is expressed or written in relation to the agent or subject. Have you got it? Voice is a grammatical feature that describes the relationship between the verb and the subject. In another 
other words we can say voice is the term used to describe whether a verb is active or passive voice is the term used to describe whether a verb is active or passive there are two main types of voice you know we are very much familiar with active voice and passive voice and usually we have to change from active to passive or passive to active but in some grammar books there are some other voices also so, i mean although they are not so i mean uh, usually used they are very rare or very less used a third type of voice called middle voice also exists but is less commonly used another or fourth type of voice is also found in some grammar books that is quasi passive voice so actually we are familiar with this active voice and passive voice we are also familiar with middle voice and quasi passive voice in as examples but perhaps we don't know the name now just we are going to see these types of voice and other look at this slide active voice what is active voice if the subject is performing the action then the verb is said to be in the active voice that means subject is the doer subject is the performer of the verb we play cricket for example you see this is an example of active voice we play cricket because here subject itself is doing the work i mean function playing who play we play so who is the subject and the uh, who is the subject here so subject is doing the action that's why it is active voice and passive voice if the subject is having the action done to it then the verb is said to be in the passive voice that means here the object is given the position of subject and subject is given the position of object as you know look at this example cricket is played by us so cricket the object actually is given the position of subject object has been emphasized in passive voice and subject seems to be passive here cricket is played by us the meaning is that the subject is having the action done to it in this sentence cricket is subject but the action is done to it by us so this passive voice middle voice the so called middle voice is an approximate type of uh, grammatical voice in which the subject both performs and receives the action expressed by the verb that is the subject acts as both the agent and the receiver for example he injured himself playing rugby yeah. so he injured himself the subject and the object himself that is self a reflexive pronoun same person this type of voice is called middle voice and when we change we change actually like this he was injured by himself you know this type of change and quasi passive voice is also you are familiar with this type of sentences a quasi passive voice a quasi passive voice is active in form but passive in sense so look at this example honey tastes sweet honey is sweet when it is tasted so these are also rare also but usual commonly we have to do passive to active and active to passive now let us uh, do some exercise here and do very very quickly because very easy sentence i have given to you change the voice of the following sentences but you have to be uh, careful first you need to see or you need to identify is it active or passive if the sentence is active you have to make it passive and if the sentence is given in passive voice you have to make it active so that is the caution you have to take they go to school every day he does not paint the wall did the mechanic fix your car you should do your homework just the voice quickly don't talk so loudly they are painting their house because voice change is basically you know subject takes the position of object and object takes the position of subject and usually we use the preposition by and the main verb is always in first participle form in passive voice the main verb is always in first participle form don't talk so loudly they are painting their house a hospital will be built if i have a million dollars who have you invited to the party more examples are here exercise the kitchen had been cleaned he has been teaching english for 10 years when are you going to buy a car try to change quickly is this sentence 
her pen was lost. She has to pass the test. I have never been to Egypt. Could you help me, please? So there are different types of sentences. You see interrogative sentence and different types of tenses are here. Who can answer my question? While changing the voice, you need to take care that if active sentence, active sentence voice is continuous tense, you have to use the word being after the helping verb. And passive verb, the main verb is always in past participle form. In other tenses, if the active voice is in present simple tense, you have to use the auxiliary verb of present continuous tense to make it passive. You know these things, I think. So have you done? Very easy sentence. So look at the previous questions. Now check your answers. The answers are given here, check. They go to school every day. Some of you may be confused. So learning by doing, I told you the other class also, as I'm not going to give you every rules here, but I am explaining some of the rules while giving answer. So try to remember, you know these things, but some you may forget by this time. They go to school every day, no change, because intransitive verb in this sentence, the go is intransitive verb, the verb which has no object. So there is no voice change actually. That's why no change. Or you can change the voice of transitive verb only. Transitive verb means the verbs which takes an object. Look at this number two. He does not paint the wall. Here the verb is pain and object is the wall. So this can be changed into passive voice. The wall is not painted by him. That is the answer. The wall is not painted by him. I think you have done the answer. Did the mechanic fix your car? So this is past simple tense, interrogative sentence. So passive voice would be also interrogative, but I told you if it is active voice sentence is past simple, then you have to use the auxiliary verb past continuous tense, like was you see here. Was your car fixed? By the mechanic? That is the answer. You should do your homework. So should, can, could, may, might, these are the model auxiliaries. After these model auxiliaries, we have to use B. Your homework should be done by you. So in passive voice, always the main verb past participle form. And models take B. Can, could, shall, should, may, might in the passive voice. Don't talk so loudly. Again, you see talk is the intransitive verb. There is no object. So there is no change of this sentence. They are painting their house. So they are painting this continuous tense, present continuous tense. So there would be a being, their house is being painted by them is not necessary. If you write by them, that is also correct. So their house is being painted. So continuous tense remains the same tense, but in passive voice, you have to add the word being before the past participle form of the main verb. Their house is being painted. A hospital will be built if I have a million dollars. I will build a hospital if I have a million dollars. So you see, will be built. This is passive voice. Will be is the helping verb of future continuous tense. And the main verb is past participle form. This is passive voice actually, because future continuous tense should be verb with ing, but the verb is past participle form. So when from passive voice, we are going back to active voice. So we have to go back to the previous tense. This is the helping verb of will be the helping verb of future continuous tense. So the active voice should be future simple tense. I will build a hospital if I have a million dollars. Number eight, who have you invited to the party? So present perfect tense. Who has been invited to the party by you? That is the answer. So let us see the other answers here. Check your one. The kitchen had been cleaned. Someone or I had cleaned the kitchen. 
as there is an object, this is also passive, we have to make it active. The kitchen had been cleaned, you see? Had been is the helping verb of past perfect continuous tense and clean is the past participle from this passive voice. We have to make it active in the past perfect tense. I had cleaned the kitchen or someone had cleaned the kitchen. He has been teaching English for 10 years. English has been being taught continuous tense again. So being is here by him for 10 years. When are you going to buy a car? So continuous tense, when is a car going to be bought by you? So to buy is the voice change of to buy, you see? When are you going to buy here? The voice change of the to buy, I mean infinitive. When are you going to buy a car? When is a car going to be bought by you? He, her pain was lost. She lost her pain, this passive voice, her pain was lost. Her pen was lost by herself, actually. So it is not um, uh, needed to write by herself. So she lost her pen. That is the active voice. She has to pass the test. Again, there is infinitive. The test has to be passed. Has to, used to, has to. There is a model. The test has to be passed. After model, to use be. And main verb is past participle. Can, could, shall, should. Like that. Used to, ought to. So has to has to be passed. I have never been to Egypt. This is again, there is, I mean, no object in transitive verb. That's why there's no voice change. Could you help me, please? Could I be helped? By you is not necessary here. Could I be helped? If you write by you, no problem. So could you help me, please? The answer is, could I be helped? Number 16, the last one, who can answer my question? interrogative sentence. By whom my answer can be answered. So there are some examples. Now you check how many you have done correct and how, how of your answer are incorrect. Uh, but you, I, by this time, I think you have understood. You have to do some more works with these grammatical items. Though you have learned these things up to intermediate level, you have to revise it now from any advanced level in grammar books, any good grammar books, like you may use an applied English grammar by PC Das or a practical uh, passage to India by Jackie Hussain, like uh, in our country, or Renan Martin or Michael Swan, those type of grammar books to practice. So there's a home task. Revise the rules of transformation of sentences, change of voice and degrees of comparison from any good English grammar book that is available at your hands. And of course, do more and more practice on transformation. I think, this class would be helpful for you if you follow these steps and practice more uh, to improve your reading skills. Next class will come up again with comprehension passage and uh, some grammatical items also that is available in our question papers usually. What type of questions come that we'll do in our next class. So I would like to thank you again for attending the class. Stay home, stay safe, pray for all. Have a nice time, bye-bye. And of course, hope to see you in the next class.